Welcome to something surprisingly different. Believe it or not, this is not a tutorial on the weekly race at Togear Express Race in Toronto Loop. I ain't saying I ain't gonna do a tutorial there, I just haven't practiced there yet, so I ain't saying I am either. But this is a tutorial for weekly race A, this is BMW Z8s at BB Race Ray. It's as of now, Monday at about 6.30 p.m. Eastern. I'm the third in the America's region, and I can get a slightly better time. But this is a simple enough track in which I'll go ahead and do the tutorial now. Is ultimately, the lines are almost going to be completely the same, even if I do improve my time. Ultimately, it's more about smoothness. So this tutorial will be selling the lines. The smoothness, honestly, will come with practice. But the line's important as a starting point, so let's get into it. Minor side note, yes, I am still boycotting the whole online bit with GT Sport, but like I've said in previous videos, the way I'm doing it now is just not complaining about the bad stuff anymore because it just gives PD more publicity, and maybe just not talking about the bad stuff giving them publicity is like not giving the annoying kid in class attention, if you don't give what's bad attention, maybe eventually it will go away. So, therefore I will continue to race and do tutorials and all that. Just not mention the bad stuff. But while mentioning this, because this is good. The only other tutorials I've done at BB Speedway, Raceway, whatever it is, is Group 3. The BMW Z8 is most definitely not... A group 3. Group 3s are stable and consistent and this car ain't and I don't really like this car very much. But let's get into why because honestly this does give this event more character. It's not as straightforward, obvious, and somewhat boring as a group 3 race would be here. This turn though is full throttle. So going into your best lap, as I'm showing here like I always do, the turn into your best lap. You can try running the high line this entire turn, but I've seen very little difference in running high line versus doing low, then high, then back to low. Because it's full throttle anyway. So, all in all, it seems to work in which you use banking in your favor. Meaning, start on the low side, just don't put in much steering input and naturally have your car carry up. So that way, once you're in the middle of the turn, on the highest part, you just gradually go lower, and then event essentially you're going downhill and using that banking to carry that much more speed. So it's perfectly fine here. But, well, not here, but here, aka out of the turn, this is where I start to not particularly like driving this car. Because the settings in which I'm using for this particular tutorial is counter steering on strong and tracks control on one. Comment away, rant away, I'm fine, I'm used to it, but without counter steering and tracks and control, this bit ain't really sold whole throttle. This car is so finicky and wanting to spin, I have to pretty much be at like half throttle. For a second or two coming off this turn, even though the turn itself is easily full throttle. So, this seems to be better for me at least with a controller. Again, I don't have a wheel, so I ain't gonna comment about that, because, well, that is kind of a negative, and again, I'm not giving PV attention with that. So, moving on to the main lap itself. Also, I'm using automatic transmission, so keep that in the factor. If you're on 135 or faster at the line, you're doing good. After a line, though, it's almost immediately thinking about the turn itself. Honestly, this is another PD logic, but I'm using it in a positive way this time. They're not giving penalties for it, so I'm using it to the best of my abilities, meaning I'm nudging the wall starting here. And using that to slow my car down more because friction and just when you hit the wall you lose a bit of speed anyway. So there's some less braking distance doing that. Take that as you may, but it's here so I'm 
taking it. I was it wasn't, but again, I'm not getting into that. Yes, well, this is this, meaning onwards after nudging that wall a bit. As you all see, I'm fully on the brakes. Fully on the brakes, still fully on the brakes. Slightly off the brakes. A bit more off the brakes. As you all can see, I still haven't used the throttle this entire time, though. Meaning, you don't really trail brake here. If you use trail brake in general, there's throttle involved. This car doesn't like throttle and braking in a turn. Generally, the most it can cope with is braking, and even so, it's still pretty loose. And Yeah, it's not the most efficient way of doing it, but this car isn't the most efficient in driving. True braking, it seems like in general, is faster for this turn, but this car just cannot physically trail brake. It spins if you do so. So, aka, use fully braking to control your car through here. Just do it as you feel fit, and do not touch the throttle until... Not even here yet. <laughs> I'm already almost to the full apex of the turn. Here. When you're already starting to go up, meaning up the banking, you know, on the throttle. When you're going down to banking, no throttle whatsoever. And as you all can see here, I ain't right on the apex either. Because if this car barely even touches this bit, it's an automatic spin. Yeah, I can get closer, and I'll admit, I'm doing this tutorial on the Monday of the event, so I can only one day into the seven days it's here. Because the lines essentially are going to stay the same for this. I'm just showing this now to give you the general lines. Times will improve because of smoothness, and smoothness comes with practice, but lines can be physically told and explained. Smoothness is simply just practice, so I can't really explain that in a tutorial. That's just purely practice. That's more on y'all. But, well, this is on me here. This is my version of doing this turn well. Because I'm pretty sure this is where the counter steering is coming into play here. Here is my steering input, aka all the way for quite a bit, even out of that turn. Up the, up the banking. Meaning, yeah, the car's loose, but it's stable, and that I think is helped because of the counter steering. So, remember that, folks. Yes, I'm using counter steering with this, but I kind of have to. I kind of have to. Other people may be different, but for me it works, so. This tutorial may not work if you ain't using counter steering, but I definitely recommend you using counter steering for this car. Group 3 cars, if I remember correctly, are in this track. I don't actually even use counter steering. This is. This car, it's strong. And it's almost completely needed. Anyway, next turn. This turn is somewhat defies how you're supposed to do turns like this because yeah you're supposed to start on the top and then go down some to use its banking as a hill just to maintain speed through that because you're going downhill kind of. This turn though you gradually do it instead of pretty much all at once because this car can't get too much steering angle with this much speed in this particular turn. It's full throttle, but if you do too much more steering angle than gradually going down the banking, you don't flat out you don't flat out spin, but you get pretty loose and you probably lose about three or four miles an hour doing it. So just gradually go down like this. And I do get close to the apex here gradually. Again, don't be fully on the apex till you're pretty much completely out of the turn there. As you all can see, there's maybe only 10% of the turn left, and I'm fully on the apex. Because one, again, you don't want to hit the apex in this car. Like, the literal no banking part of the apex. And two, again, I'm saying I'm getting more precise with this one, because, well, again, the car actually doesn't spin out here. You just lose speed if you turn in too quickly. So, this is a safer turn than the previous one, but it's still harder than it is in quite a lot of other cars too, so. Bit of practice here, but ultimately, as long as you just gradually go down and be near the apex at the end, you should be pretty good. Not terribly hard. 
Next steering though, it's pretty cotton pig and hard. Here's the steering input even out of the dirt. Not much. This is a right turn, so in theory the steering input should be going right. It's still not even really moving that much. There's when it starts to majorly move. Yeah, this bit here is a straightaway. So it kind of is supposed to stay in the middle. And as you all can see, I'm gradually turning it right. Again, in the previous turn, I did do gradual movement, but that was because of banking. This bit isn't even to turn, it's completely straight away, and I'm still having to do gradual movement. Because, well, this car is just that bad, honestly. <laughs> if, if you just fully turn right here, even though, yeah, it's the more efficient way of doing it, because then you're not turning for a longer amount of time, therefore you can carry more speed. It still gets loose, and it still almost spins in a no-banked, quite easily full-throttle turn. That's honestly quite embarrassing, but yes, it is actually that bad. Believe it or not. <laughs> Even this turn takes a bit of practice, and it's not just to, to judge how much steering input to avoid that. Yes, it's still quite important. Honestly, all in all, this is a really important turn. Not just for the fact that it's harder than it needs to be, it's because of this as well. Your car can get loose if you turn in too quickly. And, as always, no matter the car, you can also hit this. If you hit this, it doesn't only hurt this lap, it hurts the next lap too. And there's still PD logic if you hit it hard enough too, it's still a 5 second penalty, even though there should be no penalty whatsoever in hitting something that slows you down. But again, not getting too much into that, because that's giving PD bad publicity and don't give the annoying thing publicity in the sense that maybe eventually it will go away. I can only hope. So moving on from that, just get close to that and don't hit it. If you do turn in gradually your car is pretty stable so therefore as you all can see again too I was able to get that pretty precise close to the apex there. But make sure your car is stable if you're risking it getting it really close to the apex. Because even if you're a bit loose there and you get it close to the apex, in the next turn, if you're loose, you may go beyond the banking here. This right here, literally right where my car is, is pretty flat. But if you're in this point anywhere beyond here, you're pretty much done for. Because you're, the car just simply cannot make the turn if you're any farther this way. Because it's not on the banking when the turn starts. So you're going to hit that wall going full throttle if you're any more inside than this right now. I'm not so I make it, but well, here's this. Actually, we'll go back and sleep it. Again, look at this steering indicator. That's the easiest way to explain it. As you all saw there, I was actually turning a bit right, going into the left-hand turn. You have to do that, because essentially you're still turning that last turn with no banking this far into this turn. So you don't go that inside, because then you won't make this turn. That previous turn literally lasts until this turn starts in this car. <laughs> Granted, it definitely gives this race character, but it's definitely not an easy thing to do. Despite this track in general being pretty easy. <laughs> this takes a lot of practice, because if you're on the inside here, it's over. Luckily I'm not, so then I do actually start turning left for the left hand turn. Hallelujah. And then, actually this is sort of weird too. This, I can't even fully tell if I'm losing time here because it, looking at the other ghosts, it seemed like it actually gained me time. As you all can see and maybe even hear, at this point I actually do nudge the apex apart with no banking here. 
because, well, doing that actually makes my car gradually move up some, and yeah, I do lose time here. That's why I said it may not be the best thing to do, but starting here, and also throughout this entire thing, I'm pretty much fully steering lock left. Again, this car does this turn full throttle, it's just the exit of the turn that's a bit squirrely, but this part of the turn can be full lock left. Being full lock left without even having to change the steering at all, meaning the steering is smooth, after just barely nudging the apex, the car will naturally go down here to get to this apex and even nudge it a slight bit, still full lock left. This is where the steering changes a bit. As y'all see, not full lock anymore, it's slight turning. Because, barely nudging that second time will naturally make the car go out to the wall here, meaning carry as much momentum as possible. Without that much steering. So counterintuitive to the rest of the track, where in this turn you actually can touch the part with no banking a little bit. It's somewhat of a risky thing to do, but the car is also the most stable around this turn itself. Again, like the lap into this lap, it is somewhat unstable out of this turn. But, by this point, if you've done the entire lap well, and you've got this car driven sta stably throughout the rest of the lap, this part ain't hard. If you're to this point the second time around, you know what you're doing pretty much, if you have a good time. So anyway, simply just... Get close to the spot without ending it, and then you're to the line. As y'all see, my best time here is a 32.755, which again puts me third in the America's region. Do I think this can stay top 10 America's region? Maybe not. Do I think I can improve? Maybe. Do I think I can stay third in a region even if I do improve? No. I really don't. But there is Tolgear Expressway Center at a loop to come. I ain't saying I'm gonna come to it. I'm not saying I'm gonna do the laps on it. Anyway, here's the settings. But it's there. So maybe I'll do a tutorial on that. Maybe not. I'll see. But well, this is guaranteed third in America's region. I'm quite impressed with that. Hopefully, y'all can work with this too and get y'all a good lap as well. And even though this ain't the most fun car in the world, this is still worth a haul because, well, it's quite an exciting event, I'll say that. Kind of an iffy car and a boring track may just may actually make the racing interesting and good time plus maybe just maybe interesting racing, well, yeah, it's worth a yee-haw.